And so I started networking. I've been to every networking group in town. Um, and as I thought, what I found on my own was there are too many groups. They were all, not necessarily what I needed. And the time and money spent, not just financially in breakfasts, lunches, and coffees, but the time spent traveling at the meetings. And I started tracking myself, uh, what I was doing, where I was going, um, how, who, all the different people I was meeting, and to be able to reconnect with the ones I wanted to. Not necessarily not connect with the ones that I didn't want to, but at least have them in a database. Started researching CRMs, and people started asking me, you know, I hear about you, I've heard about you, how, what is it that you're doing? And as I started doing more of that, my husband and I were talking, and he said, you know, that's a business. You're giving it away for free. Yeah. You should really consider because you've done the research on CRMs, you've done research on tracking, you've seen the benefits for your business, and so Keep Them Loyal came out of that. And um, yeah, it's been really exciting. So I'm a business strategist. Awesome. Now, which Helping people of... with just getting clean with their database and organized yeah. and follow up and, and consistent yeah. touching of clients. And I'm calling it relationship revenue. Awesome. I love right? that. Right? So creating it, increasing it, and leveraging it. And every business owner needs to do that. Now tell me, Lucy, the types of clients that you're working with. I, I know with a legal background, you mm -hmm. have a specialty in working with attorneys who are phenomenal at what they do, but sometimes don't get the training to be a business owner and run their own practice, right? right? Yeah, the business side is somewhat lacking. And again, that's a generalization, however. So I do niche with attorneys because of my legal background. I understand how they work. Uh, how they can approach their business. Also in terms of networking and making contacts, a lot of times people don't understand that attorneys aren't like everyone else in terms of networking. So I love working with attorneys. So I have quite a few on my roster right now and they're really fun. So I kind of keep my toe in the legal side. Um, I also work with uh, solo entrepreneurs or one to two partner entrepreneurs yeah. because I do have that business myself and I understand what it takes. Yeah. My husband and I own a martial arts studio, so I like to work with small business owners who have brick and mortar and building that community around the business because it's so important. It's not just about the customers. And then finally, a smaller niche part is uh, direct sales leaders mm -hmm. who are trying to build teams and sales. Lucy, give me an example of a client you've worked with and how you've helped them. Okay. Um, one in particular that comes to mind is in the legal field. Uh, she's a solo practitioner does a lot of networking, um, has a lot of other things going on in her life, and has had a hard time focusing solely on that practice and getting the word out about her practice. She does a lot of networking, wasn't really gain, she was gaining ground and visibility, but wasn't really leveraging those contacts. Mm -hmm. and I'm happy to say that since we've been working together, and it's been about, I think, six months now, she, all of a sudden, things have come together. You know, the a lot of times when people work, they work on a case, and then while they're working on the case exclusively, or a project, or with a customer or a client, you forget about what happens after. Yes. And so what's happening is she's seeing, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this traction's happening. Business is coming through. We're leveling up her processes and her systems. She now has an assistant coming in more consistently to help her. It's probably gonna increase. Business is booming. And we're talking about now that she's got her systems in place, uh, we're gonna be a little more proactive in going after the clients she really wants. Because now she knows, in the beginning, like all of us, you take on whoever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she, she need to pay the rent. Yeah. yeah. Sure, let's whoever do it. Whoever you are, I don't know, I'll make it work. You know. <laughs> but once you get something, you know, you get a little under your feet, you've got your client base, now let's be proactive because you know who you want to work with, who you don't want to work with. And we've set up her funnels, for want of a better word. I don't know yeah. if that's the right yeah. word. Yeah. Um, yeah but these funnels of who comes into her business and how to deal with them. So that's been fascinating. I love working with her. And so that would be a great example of what I can do. Fantastic. Yeah, it's so interesting. It's it's so complex, but yet so simple at the mm -hmm. same time. And as a business owner, we get so mired in, to your point, the client work, you know, the day to day, that having somebody, you know, with your experience and your perspective come in and say, hey, we just need to groom and organize mm -hmm. and, you know, continue to plant seeds and make sure that we're consistently mm -hmm. staying in touch. Uh, with existing clients, past clients, potential mm -hmm. clients, and creating a system and software to do that right. is complex but yet simple at it, the same time, is. right? It is. And you know, honestly, every business has a B2B aspect. Yes. And if you don't think you do, I want you to really take time to think about that because you can go one-on-one -on -one forever and you will cap. Yeah. If you start 
creating partnerships, alliances, whatever you want to call it, with other business owners, that is where your business will start growing exponentially. Great point. Lucy, tell me, in what ways do you work with clients? How do clients engage with you? Okay, well, um, we do one-on-one -on -one individual sessions. We can do those in person or online. Um, I like to do both, actually. The initial I prefer in person because I think it's a little easier to talk about things. But we talk about your business, your business goals, how you run your business, who's involved in your business. Do you have someone to tap in for doing some of that work? And we create a plan that works for you and so a lot of times people ask me well what CRM do you recommend or how do I do X and there's really not one answer for everybody um, because what works for you may not work for you you know some people are digital some people are paper well the same thing goes for how you reach out to leverage your contacts what might work for you may not work for the other and you might not have extra time to do that so we want to create something that works specifically for you whether it's one-on-ones, whether it's um, through your social media, mm -hmm. how do you handle those contacts and leads, those all need to be systematized so that you are doing the, the work that you went into business for, right? We're all passionate, for the most part, most part, Yes. you go into your Hopefully. own business, right? That's the goal. <laughs> Something you really love to do, and then what happens is you get caught up in that business side, and it takes over. And then you're so you're doing all the admin and the budgeting and the da, 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 and all this, and you're not out there anymore. You're not dealing with the people. You're not doing the work you love. And my goal working with you is to help you get back that, mm -hmm. but also make sure you're increasing your revenue. Yeah, absolutely. I will say though, if you're new in business and you truly are treating your business like a business, it is important to invest in your business. Yes. When I first started to create this. I did not have the money, but I did hire a business coach and I made sure I took care of that, but it really helped me get further faster. And so a lot of times, you know, invest in yourself, invest in your business, rather than wait, because once your business gets up and running, it's actually harder to backtrack and get these things in place. True, very true. It's so worth the investment. It is. It is, because you're gonna lose money out of the gate by missing those opportunities right. that systemization and follow-up of people you're meeting connecting with whether it's online or in-person mm -hmm. networking as you mentioned is so so critical and you're right I meet so many business owners that you know they're a couple years into their business mm -hmm. and they have piles of yes. <laughs> business cards on their desk and you know you ask them how do you find a contact mm -hmm. and they go I search my email <laughs> what right yes now. what in fact I just had someone contact me and hired me who was we had just spoken she went on a trip had to contact somebody and literally it took her over three hours <laughs> to find that contact person's information and she thought she was organized I got an email while she was on vacation. We need to set something up because this is ridiculous. Yes. I didn't realize this is what I was doing. And when you really look at your business, where are you spending your time? You need to track, Yes. really need to track every aspect. Absolutely, to grow, I mean, it's so mm -hmm. critical. If you're gonna bring other people onto your team, the mm -hmm. keeping it in your head just yeah. does not cut it anymore, so. Yes, only excuse that it would take me longer to explain it than, no, it's like the dog chasing the tail. At some point, you're going to hit capacity. You want to be able to turn that over to somebody, know exactly what they need to do, how long it takes them, so then you're able to review them, yep. do performance reviews, make sure they understand the position, and then they can grow with you because they understand your mission. Absolutely.